Okay, welcome to Intro to C Programming. Today we are going to write a program for finding the average of a set of numbers. We're going to be doing this using loops. Uh, specifically, we are going to be using while loops for this uh, program. So you see that there are four bullet points on this program. The first one, write a program to find the average of ten numbers that are entered by the user. Then we're going to modify it to find the average of, of as many numbers as the user wants. So we're going to prompt them and say, how many numbers would you like to find the average for? And then we will uh, find the average of that many numbers, however many uh, that they type. Then we're going to modify the program again, prompt them, the user after finding the average, see if you would like to find the average of another set of numbers. And if so, we're going to start the program over and do it all over again. And then the last one is that we are going to change it so that we're not even going to prompt the user to say how many numbers do you want to find the average for. We're just going to say uh, enter a number, enter another, enter another, enter negative one when you're finally done entering numbers, and we will then find the average of that many numbers. Okay, a little bit of logic is going to go into this program, but it should be pretty fun. So. Go ahead and we're going to start off with the easy one. Write a program to find the average of 10 numbers that are entered by the user. Go ahead, open up Visual Studio. I'm going to create a project called uh, Averages and then a program called Average.CPP inside of that. you select empty project on uh, the additional options under application type and then in our solution explorer we should get um, a few folders that will pop up there for us under source files go to add new item and cpp file and i'm going to name it average.cpp and there's our program ready to go okay if we want to do any kind of input or output in our program in c we have to do include the standard io.h library and our entry function for all of our C programs is the main function. We're going to have one that doesn't take any parameters and returns nothing, so it is void main parenthesis parenthesis followed by our curly braces. Okay, we need to uh, prompt the user to enter 10 different numbers and then uh, find the average of them. So. One way that we could go about doing this is by creating 10 integer variables and assign a value each time that the user types it into that. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. Don't type this. I'm going to delete this in just a second. But I could do num1, num2, num3, num4, and so on up to num10. And then I'm going to prompt the user and say, enter a number. And then I'm going to read that into the first number. And then I'm going to prompt them and say, enter a number and read it into the second one. And then enter a number and read it into the third one, and so on. This is one way to do it. You notice that what I'm doing here, though, is I'm just copying and pasting code. This is a terrible way to go about things. Whenever you find yourself copying and pasting code, the first thing that now should come to mind is we could use a loop. So. We want to use a loop here instead. Something else that should come to mind in the future once we talk about it is that you could use functions. But we don't need to worry about functions right now. We haven't learned them yet. But right now, we could use a loop. So I'm going to go ahead and delete uh, everything that I just put in there. And we are going to create a loop. Now what we want is we want our loop to iterate 10 times. So I'm going to create some kind of a variable. I'll call it counter. Say as long as counter is less than 10, I'm going to keep looping. So I need to create this counter variable. I'm going to initialize it to some value. And then inside of my while loop, I'm just going to increment the value of counter. I'm going to make it equal to counter plus 1. So this looks like a pretty neat way to do it. So I'm starting counter off at 0. I say while 0 is less than 10, that's true. It's going to get inside of here. And then I say, OK, well, take counter and add 1 to it and reassign it back into counter. So then counter is going to become a 1. While 1 is less than 10, it loops again. While 2 is less than 10, it loops again. While 3 is less than 10, it loops again. All the way up to 9 being less than 10, it's still going to get inside. It's not going to get inside once counter is equal to 10. Once the value of counter becomes 10, it's going to say 10 is not less than 10. I'm going to break out of that. However, I have actually looped 10 times because I started the value of counter off at 0. When I start the value of counter at 0, I only have to go up to strictly being less than 10. If, on the other hand, you wanted to start the value of counter off at 1, then you could go up to less than or equal to 10, and that would also loop for 10 times. Often in programming, though, we make them 0 base. So we're going to start at 0, and we're going to go strictly less than the number of times that we would actually like to iterate. So this loop now, make a little comment here. Uh, 
loop 10 times. It's going to loop exactly 10 times. Now, what do we want to do each time they loop? Well, we want to print out something to the user and say, return number. And then we want to read in an integer into some kind of a variable. Well, I need to know where to read this. I'm going to read it into a variable called num. Well, I need to create that variable. So there's my variable num. So I'm going to read in a number from the user into a variable num. Now you might think, well, but the second time we come in here, we're going to overwrite the value of the variable num. That is absolutely correct. So what I need to do is also create a variable that I'm going to name sum. And each time after the user types something, gives me a number, I'm going to add it to the value of sum. Now, something that I want to make sure I do is initialize sum to be zero. Because at first, I don't know what the value of that variable is. It's pointing at some location of memory, and who knows what was in that location of memory before we worked. So it could be uh, garbage. It's probably going to be garbage that's in there. It's going to have been initialized to some, some random set of numbers. So I want to initialize it to zero so that I make sure that the first time that I come in here, the value of sum is zero, and then I add num to it, which is the value that the user types in. Now, this variable sum, by the time that I finish my loop, is going to have what in it? the sum of all of the numbers that the user has typed. Well, this makes a lot of sense for me, right? This is really going to help me because the way that I find the average of a set of numbers is I add them all up and then I divide by the number of values that I have. Well, how many values do I have? I have 10 values. I know I have 10 values because I loop 10 times. So what I'm going to do here is I just need to divide this now uh, to find my average. So I'm going to create a variable called average. Now, since I'm trying to find the average, chances are this is going to be uh, a float because I'm, I'm probably not going to get a number which is divisible by 10. It's possible that I'm going to, but I might not. So I want it to be a float. I'm going to take my sum variable. I'm going to divide it by 10. If I do it just like this, this on, on the right side, this is going to be an integer divided by an integer. When I divide an integer by an integer, what do I get? an integer. It's just going to chop the decimal places off of it for me. So what I want to do instead is I'm going to typecast my sum to be uh, a float and then if I want I can make my value 10 a float just by adding a decimal place to it. A decimal and then a zero. And that also makes that, it actually makes it a double instead of a float, but it'll still work for us here. Um, and then I'm just going to print out and say oops, print out the average is uh, percent Let's do a dot 2 f on this, followed by a new line character, and print out the value of average. Okay, that's it. Let's go ahead and build this up. Let's see if we compile down here. Hopefully it'll say build succeeded in just one second. There it is. And let's go ahead and run it. And enter number 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. What is the average? The average is 55.00. Okay, pretty good. Seems about right to me. Let's go ahead and run this again. I want to see if I can get a decimal, so I'm going to keep it the same on all of them, except on 100, I'm going to make it 101. And now you see my average is 55.1. So that takes care of that first part for us. We found the average of 10 values and check that out. We didn't even have to create 10 variables to do it. Uh, just by using a loop, we had some uh, pretty compact code here. It looks pretty good. And uh, we were able to find the average. We made it a float. We typecast it to a float. Everything looks good on that one. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look at our second part of our program. Second part here asks us modify the program to find the average of as many numbers as the user wants. In other words, ask the user to enter how many numbers he would like to find the average for, then prompt him for that many values. Okay. So now what we want to do is before we even start looping right here, we want to prompt the user and say, how many numbers to find the average for? We're going to prompt them for that and read this into uh, some integer variable. And I'm going to call it num values. Okay, so create an integer variable called num values. I'm going to read that into it. Now, instead of looping 10 times, I'm going to loop how many times? Well, the number of times that the user typed in. So instead of looping 10 times right here, I'm going to loop for num values times. And then down here, instead of dividing by 10 to find the average, I'm going to divide by a typecasted num values. And that's it. 
Let's build it, run it. Now it's going to prompt us and say how many numbers to find the average for. Well, let's do four numbers. 10, 20, 30, 40, and the average is 25. Pretty cool, huh? That didn't even take much work because of the way that we wrote that first program. So now that's going to allow the user to type in however many numbers he wants, and we're just going to prompt them that many times. If you really wanted to take the time to do it, type in 100. It's going to prompt you for 100 numbers, and then you're going to uh, print out uh, what the average is of all of those values. It'll work just the same way. Okay, let's take a look back at our program here. The next one, modify the program again to prompt the user after finding the average to see if you would like to find the average of another set of numbers. If so, the program should start over by prompting him to enter the number of values he would like to find the average of, then prompt him for that many values again. Okay, so what we're doing here is we want to loop the entire program. We want to loop the entire program again. So right in here, I'm going to create another loop, and I want to loop as long as the user still wants to. So I'm going to, I'm going to prompt you to say, do you want to go again? And if they say yes, let's say that I'm going to prompt them to say Y or N for yes or no. So if some variable that I'm going to call again is equal to y, then I'm going to loop again. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight all of that and hit the tab key, okay? When you highlight all of that, you hit the tab key in Visual Studio, it indents it all for you. It's very important for programming that you keep your indentation correct. So uh, I need to create that char variable. And if I want to make sure that I get into that while loop at least one time, I need to make sure that I set that variable equal to y. If I were to run my program right now, my program would loop forever. I don't have any stop condition on this because the value of again never changes. So what I need to do is after I print the average, I'm then going to prompt the user and say, would you like to run to find the average of more numbers? Now I need to do a scan f and read in a character into that variable again. Now if you remember from one of our previous programs that we wrote, this is actually going to read the backslash n character in because we still have the backslash n character in our buffer from when we read our last integer num right here. So what we want to do is read a second character into that variable again and that's going to now be our y or n. Uh, if you didn't follow that, look at one of our previous programs and uh, I went over uh, what's inside of the buffer and uh, how integers are read and the backslash n that stays in the buffer. So when we read a character after an integer, we still have the backslash n character in the buffer and that's going to go into the character the first time that we read it. The second time we read it, the buffer is now going to be empty and we are going to be able to uh, get the value back out that we want. Okay, one other change that we need to make here is we have initialized some of these values up here outside of that outer while loop. We've initialized counter and sum to both be zero. We're going to need to initialize those in here to be zero. The first time through it's going to be somewhat redundant because we've initialized them to zero outside and then we initialize them to zero inside also. However, if we loop through a second time, we're not going to have ever gotten back up to this section of code up here. So we need to reinitialize both of those values to zero so that we can prompt the user again and it's not going to take any of the previous values. All right, build the program and let's go ahead and run it again. How many numbers do you want to find the average? Let's do three numbers. I'm going to do uh, 10, 20, 31. So there's my average. Would you like to find the average of more numbers? Yes. How many? Uh, let's do four numbers this time. 10, 20, 30, 40. My average is 25. Do you want to do it again? Sure, let's do it one more time. I want to do six numbers. With, um, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. There's my average is 35. Now, would you like to find the average of more numbers? Anything that I type here other than Y is going to uh, break me out of this because my loop right here is only looking to see if I have the value Y. If I have any other character whatsoever, it's not going to continue to loop again. So any character at all, uh, N is probably the obvious choice, but if it was any character other than a lowercase y, it's not going to loop again. And you'll see then that my program terminates. If you want to see if it's a lowercase y or a capital Y, you can do that and you just do it like that. Put the or in there and then have again equal equal to a capital Y. And now it would take either a lowercase y or a capital Y at that point. Okay, that takes care of the third part. Let's go ahead and take a look at the last part of our program. Change the program so it does not prompt the user to enter how many numbers he wants to find the average for, but tells him to enter values until he enters a negative 1. Once he reads a negative 1, 
find the average of all the values up to that point. Okay. So the last part, what we're going to do is we are going to take out this part here of num values. <coughs> um, and we just want to loop until the user enters a negative one. Okay. The number that we're looking for here now, instead of it being uh, uh, while counter is less than num values, we're going to say while uh, the number that the user entered does not equal a negative one. Okay. And the value of num, we don't have an initial value of num, so let's go ahead and give num a default value. And remember, come down here, since num is going to have a different value at that point, and give it a default value here of zero. So it's going to start off and say num equals zero. While num does not equal negative one, that's going to be true. Enter a number. They enter it right there. I increment my value of counter. So I'm going to know how many numbers I've counted, right? Counter now is going to tell me how many numbers I've counted. And sum still has my sum in it. Num is there. So I'm just going to continue looping until they enter a negative one. I'm going to take sum and instead of dividing it by num values, instead I'm going to divide this by counter. Counter is going to tell me how many values I have. Um, and I think that might be all that we need to do here. Let's go ahead and give this a shot, see how it works. Okay, enter a number. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and it's just going to keep prompting me until I enter negative 1. And then it tells me the average. Do I want to find the average of more numbers? Sure. 10, 20, 30, 40, negative 1. Hmm, okay, a little bit of a problem here. It's actually taking the negative one as one of the values that I want. And I really didn't want that one, right? So what I'm going to do here is I need to do one thing after my while loop um, is add one since the last number was negative one, but that wasn't one I wanted to find the average of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take sum and I'm just going to add one to it. Now that's going to fix that last little problem. See, the problem is that num, what I read in right here, was negative 1 on the last time through. And then you see what I did is I subtracted 1 from sum. So when I subtracted 1 from sum, uh, it then uh, threw off my value of sum for what I wanted. Actually, I've incremented counter one time here at the end also, but that's okay because I started off with counter's value being equal to 0. So that actually is probably going to give me the correct answer still. So let's give this a shot. Let's test it out with just two numbers. Oops, two and four. When I find the average of that, it should be a three. That's giving me a two. So it's still doing something a little funky for me here. Um, so the problem that I have is I probably need to subtract one value off of counter also. Since counter has counted one time too many for me. So let's do that right there also. Now let's try it. Let's see, two and four with a negative one gives me a average of a 3. Let's do it again. Um, so we know that the average of, let's see, let's do some numbers we know the average of. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Gives me 5.5. So we're back on track. It looks like everything's working. I don't need to find the average of any more numbers. There is our program. Pretty neat. We've added some logic into this. We used a couple while loops. We modified our program a couple times. Hopefully you all followed along with what I just did there. I'll post this code right here that's got these comments in there. You can hopefully follow along with that. If you have any questions, let me know. Good luck.